We'll start by creating a railing that's in our course book in Chapter 16. It covers several features and parameters within the railing tool, and by doing this exercise in the video, it may clear up some of the missing steps in the book. We're creating a profile mesh region, which will hold the wire mesh in our railing design. We'll go to the application menu and go to new family and look for the profile RFT template. We'll open that up and then we'll navigate to the folder that you're saving your Revit files in and I'll call this family mesh region. Pick save. This reference line indicates the top of the rail. We're drawing the region that will hold the mesh rail. So we'll start the line tool in the detail panel and then use a rectangle to create a rectangle that's two foot six inches long and one half inch wide. We can then save this file and load it into the project. Before we start customizing a railing, let's draw one of the default railings so that we can compare. In the circulation tab, let's pick railing, pick a point, pull your mouse across and pick another point, and then pick the finish edit mode. Go to the 3D view and you'll see this default railing. Now let's start the railing tool again, but this time we'll pick the edit type button and then duplicate this handrail rectangular. Go ahead and pick duplicate and call it railing wire mesh. Pick OK. There are several parameters here, but the two main parameters that we're we'll working with are rail structure and baluster placement. Under baluster placement, let's pick edit. Right now, each one of these vertical balusters are four inches from the previous baluster. So we'll change that to four feet. The base is going to be the host, which will be the stairs. The posts are square. You can see that they're square here. And they start from the host and go to rail one, which is this rail at the top. Let's go ahead and pick OK. Then we'll pick Edit next to Rail Structure. Right now we have one rail that's three feet in height. We can pick Insert to insert a new rail, or we can highlight this rail and pick Duplicate. So we'll highlight this rail and pick Duplicate, and we'll rename these Rail 1 and Rail 2. Rail 1 is 3 feet. Let's make rail 2 4 inches. And then pick Insert and create a rail that will represent the wire mesh. We'll change the name to wire mesh. And the height of the wire mesh will just be below rail 1 and above the 4 inch rail 2. We'll make this one 2 feet 10 inches. It'll also include a negative 1 inch offset in the horizontal direction. And the profile, instead of using the default profile, we're going to use our new profile that we created called Mesh Region. Then we'll change the material for the wire mesh rail. We'll pick the by category select the small icon with the three dots here under material. I'll pick metal panel to start with and then pick the duplicate button at the bottom left and type in here wire mesh. We can pick OK and then for the wire mesh material the concept is to use a pattern. So we're changing the surface pattern by selecting here this icon with three dots and changing the pattern type from drafting to model. And notice here there are no wire mesh patterns, so we're going to create a new one. 
we'll pick the new button and here we'll create cross hatching instead of parallel lines and the cross hatching spacing will be two inches for line spacing one and two inches for line spacing two you can see the preview is a cross hatch of two inches by two inch we'll also name this surface pattern wire mesh We'll keep the 45 degree angle and pick OK. With that wire mesh highlighted, we can go ahead and pick OK again. We want to change the transparency from 0% to 100 so that we can see through the material and use the surface pattern. We can go ahead and pick OK and then pick OK again and pick Apply and pick OK. Now we're ready to place our rail. We can pick a point, pull our mouse across and pick another point, and then pick the green check mark for finish edit mode. This is our new rail based on a wire mesh that's in between rail 1 and rail 2. Rail 1 is 3 feet in height. The wire mesh region is 2 foot 10 in height and rail 2 is 4 inches from the host or base. When I changed the rail 1 to rail 2 it brought the baluster down to rail 2. So we'll select the rail and pick edit type and then pick edit next to baluster placement. Notice that the top of the main pattern goes to rail 2. We can change that to rail 1 and we can change all of the posts to go all the way to the top of rail 1. Go ahead and pick apply and OK and you'll see that the posts now will bypass rail 2 and go all the way to rail 1. These balusters are 4 feet apart. So notice because I started from the left side and drew towards the right side, they're at 4 foot locations until at the end there's an extra one because there are no more 4 foot dimensions. Select the railing and pick edit type and then pick edit next to baluster placement. You could change the justify here at, in the middle of the dialog box to spread pattern to fit. The pattern will stay around four feet but be spread out at the ends. The start, corner, and end posts are all square. You could change those to round. Let's go ahead and pick OK and OK again. Railings can also be used to create other components like this customized shelf. If you think about the profiles and the top part being the rail and these shelf racks being the baluster and the distance between the baluster and all the offsets and settings, you can create several shapes that can follow a path. I copied this railing over here and then edited the path making it curve and created here an extension of that repetitive object as a different shape. You can select the railing and use edit type to change some of the settings but if you'd like to change the profile once you've created it you can go in the project browser and find profiles and railings. So for the profile shelf here, I can highlight shelf, right click and pick edit. If we need to change the profile or the railing baluster once we've placed the railing. So let's take a look at creating one of these so that you can create your own. First, we'll create a new family and we'll look for the baluster post file. 
In this ballast or post file, we can create an extrusion. When we pick extrusion, we're going to pick a plane to work on. We'll pick OK and then just select one of these reference planes and pick the elevation as front. Pick open and we're in the front view creating a side profile for the extrusion. At this point you can draw whatever shape you'd like as long as it's a closed loop. We can change the depth to your customized depth I'll type in 4 inches and then pick the green check mark to finish the extrusion. If you look at this in 3D, you'll see that you've created your own representation of a post for your railing. We can then save it as a different name. You can call this My Post and pick Save. Then load it into your project. Now we can create another profile for the top rail. So we'll go to the application menu, pick new family. You have a choice of creating it with the profile template or the profile rail template, which will show you in text where the top rail is and the center line of the rail. We can use either one. I'll use profile rail this time. Here's the rail center line and the rail top. I can pick line under detail and create a rectangle to represent my rail top. You can be more creative and create a rail top with a different profile if you'd like. Save this file as a different name. My rail and then load it into the project. Now we're ready to create our own duplicate of the railing. We can start the railing tool, pick edit type, change the type to one of the defaults like handrail rectangular and then pick duplicate. We'll change this to new shelf but this could be a different name for your design. Pick OK. Under Rail Structure, we'll pick Edit and change the profile of this rail to My Rail, the one that you just created as a profile. You can also attach a material to that shelf if you'd like to pick up a wood finish or other material. And you could change the height if you'd like. Let's go ahead and pick OK. Then under Baluster Placement, pick Edit and change the Baluster Family from Baluster Square to My Post. Post being similar to a baluster. We'll change the Start, Corner, and End Post to my post also. You can change the justify to spread pattern to fit like we did before and change the distance between the post or balusters to something different like five feet. Let's take a look. We'll pick apply and OK and then OK again and draw our new railing. Pick the green check mark to finish the edit mode and we've got the beginning of our new shelf. I'll have to change the length of this profile for the railing so in the project browser I can go over to profiles and highlight my rail right click and pick edit. Selecting the rail and picking edit type, I pick the edit next to baluster placement and change the end point spacing to a negative 4 inch. If we pick apply 
and then OK and apply again, we can see the end post goes underneath the railing. And you can change the path to create repetitive shapes that follow a path. Deleting some of the rails that we've drawn, I'll go to level one and start the stair tool in the circulation panel. You've probably placed stairs before. Uh, you'll see that in the draw panel, there's a run, a boundary, and a riser. Using the base level one and the top level two, Revit will calculate the desired number of risers and there's always one less tread. Keeping in mind that OSHA standards are different from residential standards, which are different from commercial standards, in the riser and tread codes. For the run, we can pick a point and then pull our mouse to the left, pick a point, come over here and create our stair. In the edit mode, we can make many changes before finishing our stair. We can select this entire side and drag it over to the desired width between. We can change the width of the stair in the properties. We can even edit the side of the stair to create something a little more unique we can change the boundary and select riser to draw risers that are customized. Deleting this outside landing, we can create a boundary that curves. Picking rail type, we can change the rail type to handrail rectangular and pick OK. Picking the green check mark will give us our stair. Selecting the stairs, we can pick Edit Sketch and customize our stairs. Selecting the stair and picking Edit Sketch, you can use this blue line to change how many risers and treads that you'd like to use between the landings. But Revit will give you a warning because there is a desired number of risers and treads based on the base level and the top level. The main dialog boxes to look for are the properties, the edit sketch mode, the project browser, and if you type in VG, under visibility you can find stairs and change the visibility of stringers and how much of the stringer is cut along with the arrow and text for down and up and the hidden lines. Going to the 3D view, you can see the stairs with the new railing. When you're placing your railing, you'll need to pick the pick new host icon to select your stair so that the railing will be placed on your stair and not down at the first level. There are several different types of stairs and profiles already created, posted in Blackboard that came with Chapter 16, including a cable, tube, an apple stair, and a curtain wall panel railing.